You're not prepared to change the economy, to change science, one bit whatsoever. Very simple solutions have been available for decades, and you have yet to do anything to make them a reality. So continue with your bullshit, lady. The next segment, we're continuing well, the subject of... Well, at least I have a plan to fight ISIS. Process. Plan to fight ISIS? Honey, you created ISIS. So stop talking shit about ISIS. We know exactly what you did. That whole Benghazi, Michigash, well, we know exactly what you did. You made a deal with the Muslim Brotherhood, okay? You're trying, you're playing the worst game of the art of war that anyone has ever seen. You created ISIS to work as the Muslim Brotherhood's army so they could cut a swath across the Middle East so they could take over everything in the Middle East, but the Egyptians foiled your plans and Assad is foiling your plans by going against the Muslim Brotherhood and you and the weapons that you gave them because you got to figure out where are they getting these Toyota? Why is it that America was able to destroy within 100 hours the vaunted Iraqi Republican Army and yet ISIS manages to make appearances, 35,000 men here and there, and not a single casualty. I'll tell you why that is. You know why? Because you're protecting them. You and the Islamist in the White House created ISIS as your little pseudo-sword, and they're cutting their swath across the Middle East, killing Christians by the thousands, killing Muslims by the thousands, so the Muslim Brotherhood can take over. You have no plan to fight them. You only have a plan to capitulate to them with your little Muslim Brotherhood mole stooge, Huma Abedin, whose mother is a member, a founding member of the Muslim Sisterhood, and her father was a founding member of the Muslim Brothers. So don't talk shit, lady. We know exactly what you're all about. You're a liar. You're a stooge. You betrayed this country. You have violated 10 USC 904, aiding the enemy, along with multiple members of both Republican and Democrat parties to betray this nation by arming our enemies who have unleashed a war on the Middle East, Europe, and the United States. So stop talking shit. And I want to talk about uh, taxes. Uh, the fundamental difference between the two of you concerns the wealthy. Uh, Secretary Clinton, you're calling for a tax increase in the wealthiest Americans. I'd like you to further defend that. I'm going to make it very simple for you, Lester. When was the last time you got hired to do a job by a poor person? Huh? Who's paying your million dollar salary there, Les? Is it the brothers down on 125th Street? Or is it the big mockers? down in Midtown. Who's paying those bills? Who's making the suits that Hillary Clinton is wearing right now? That's a $3,000 suit. You think that was made by a couple of guys on Fordham Road? A little sweatshop off the corner? Of course it wasn't. It was made by the big boys with the big dollars in the big factories. When you tax the rich, what you do is you're taking away their play money. You're taking away their investment money. They're taking away the money that they put into the economy that is used by contractors who will mow their lawns, do their gardens, watch their children, train their muscles, move their cars, build their boats, maintain their summer homes, and all of these things. A single wealthy family will support multiple non-wealthy families, allowing those non-wealthy families to work up the ladder through the services they provide through the products that they offer to those wealthy individuals who have the money a means to make this economy better. Giving money to poor people who will turn around and spend it and throw it into the economy where the government makes taxes off it is not doing anything. The services provided to the wealthy by the not so wealthy are what drive the economy of this nation. It's very simple. You got women like Hillary Clinton who put into effect restrictions on our ability to move our own money. Do you realize, as an American citizen, that you cannot withdraw, if you even have $10,000 in your bank account, you cannot withdraw that $10,000 without having to sign over to the feds an affidavit that it's not going to be used for drugs or some sort of criminal enterprise? This is what the feds think of you, that you are nothing but a criminal. And that by possessing your own money, you are somehow engaged in a criminal act. Let's talk about profiling people. 
That's profiling if I ever saw it. That's profiling an entire nation. You have $10,000 and the government feels that it's their business to know what you're doing with it? That's Hillary Clinton's fault. Okay? We've looked at your tax proposals. I don't see changes in the corporate tax rates or the kinds of proposals you're referring to that would cause the repatriation, bringing back of money that's stranded overseas. You don't know how we're gonna repatriate the money. Well, it's very simple. When they have to pay a tariff to bring their product back into the country of their own origin, they're not gonna like that. See? Just like the small guy doesn't like being taxed to death, just like you don't like being asked questions where truthful answers are required, well, businesses don't like being double tapped for their own money. So, if it's more profitable for them to run their businesses in the United States, guess what, Secretary Clinton? They're going to work to their own advantage and they're going to relocate their businesses back in the United States instead of Guatemala, instead of Indonesia, instead of South America and Taiwan. It's very basic math. There were no toys made in the United States. One, because of your EPA, destroying everything, taxes, everything else, unions, everything else. Erase them, manufacturing comes back in this country. And you know what? And if you're not making enough money as a manufacturer or as a worker in one of those things, well, then maybe your education, again, if you can perform at a high school level, at your grade level, you should be able to at attain any public service job. Just like you, Hillary. Again, we know that you failed your bar exam, so it's not like you're that smart. You're just a very efficient liar and you slept your way to the top. But we'll forget about that. We'll let, let you lie a little more. Trickle down did not work. It got us into the mess we were in in 2008 and nine. Trickle down didn't work. If trickle down didn't work, you know, Ronald Reagan was the creator of the trickle down economy. Why was America engaged in the largest and most profitable increase in business and manufacturing from 1981 through the 90s that your clown husband benefit from was able to claim the benefits from that, that economy as his own. You think the tech bubble came out of nowhere? No, it didn't. It came out of the efforts of the 1980s. It came out of the 1980s economy. Your economy, the Clinton economy, ended in recession. 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 Never forget that, Secretary Clinton. The Clinton economy ended as a recession. So let's not talk about anything about trickle up or trickle down, because clearly you don't know anything. You don't even know what's trickling down your husband's leg right now. So please, don't kid yourself. Slashing taxes on the wealthy hasn't worked, and a lot of really smart, wealthy people know that. And they are saying, hey, we need to do more to- We're talking about the burden that Americans have to pay, yet you have not released your tax returns. And, and the reason nominees have, have released their returns for decades is that voters will know if their potential president owes money to, who he you know, owes it to, and any business conflicts. Uh, don't Americans have a right to know if there are any conflicts of interest? No, Lester. Here's why. Because we know no matter what the truth is, you're going to spin it to your advantage. And you need a liar going to spin it to your advantage. Quite frankly, the only people that the tax returns would indicate you owe money to is the government, who we already know is corrupt. So who gives a shit what you think the American people want to know? They don't want to know. You want to know. You want to know because you want to nitpick. At the same time, you don't investigate the Clinton Foundation. Why is that? You don't investigate Clinton's uh, education scam and all the millions that Billy and Hilly have racked in from the little Clinton education scandal, right? So don't worry about taxes. Taxes is bullshit. If, you're, if your main claim to be president of the United States is your business, then I think we should talk about that. You know, your campaign manager said that you built a lot of businesses on the backs of little guys. And indeed, I have met a lot of the people who were stiffed by you and your businesses. Donald. Name them. I've Name them. Dishwashers, painters, architects, glass installers, marble installers, drapery installers, like my dad was. Well, come on. Name one of them by name, not by profession, and explain where exactly you met them and how long you had conversation with them because we know that you don't really talk to the little people. How did they get through your Secret Service uh, cordon to speak to you about Donald Trump? 
Explain this to me. Anyone? Can you? Anyone, please. Did these people have the $25,000 required to take a photograph with you? Did they have the $100,000 per plate have dinner with you? Where and when did you engage with these service providers, Secretary Clinton, you bullshit artist fuck? Thousands of people that you have stiffed over the course of your business not deserve some kind of apology? To the thousands of people who you have killed during your tenure of Secretary of State in the Middle East and Europe and Asia, do they deserve an apology? Do the four Navy SEALs and the American ambassador that was killed at Benghazi, do they deserve an apology or do they get your bullshit story that was created by a YouTube video that nobody saw, right? 1,500 people saw a YouTube video in four years and suddenly you created a riot that, that resulted in a, a destroyed embassy? Come on, lady. Who are you bullshitting? You're only bullshitting yourself and the idiots who believe you because they're so fucking stupid they can be convinced of anything. Your father was worth over $2 million. So what are you talking about? You lived a very cushy lifestyle. You know, you were never hungry. You never needed work. You, needed, you never needed anything. And quite frankly, when you failed the bar exam, you couldn't even be a real lawyer. You had to go down to Arkansas, Rubeville, to pass the bar. Right? Spoiled little white girl and her little white privilege talking shit while she's got daddy's millions to sit on. Come on, lady. You're a fraud from day one. Well, we're well behind schedule, so I want to move to our next segment. Uh, we move into our next segment talking about America's direction, and let's start by talking about race. Race has been a big issue in this campaign, and one of you is going to have to bridge a very wide and bitter gap. So how do you heal the divide? For starters, what we do is we remove all of your ethno-Marxist bullshit from the media. Ethnomarx is bullshit. Well, ethnomarx is bullshit, exactly. You just presented a lie to everybody because those African Americans, those Negroes who have been shot by police officers, were shot by police officers for failing to listen to police officers. Those blacks who were shot by police officers are only 20% of those who were shot by police officers. Yet, they were 60% of those who were engaging in crimes and or shooting at police officers. Isn't that something? 80% of all those shot by police officers were Caucasians, but you couldn't name a single one of them. You know why? Because the media doesn't make an issue of it, because the media cannot sell papers, because whites do not go out and riot when guilty whites are shot by police officers. Whites don't even go out and riot when men without guns are shot by police officers. Blacks do. Why do you think that is? Why can you gin up an entire community when a thug is killed by police officers? When this same community is victim to 90% of black on black crime. Why is that? 90% of black crimes committed on blacks. Yet blacks are worried about how cops treat blacks. The media is responsible for that. The education system is responsible for that. You, Lester, are responsible for that because you promote lies rather than the truth and nothing else matters. Plain and simple. If blacks cannot understand that blacks were shot by cops because those blacks were not in compliance, just like whites, just like Latinos, just like American Indians, blacks have a mental comprehension problem. It's very simple. They have an inability to understand that there is accountability for actions for other blacks. We call that black fragility. Black fragility. I hope that doesn't offend you, Lester, but it's called black fragility. Secretary Clinton, you get two minutes on this. Well, you're right. No, he's this wrong. remains a significant challenge in our country. That's right, because people like you, Hillary, just like your co-fed, Eric Holder, is a coward and refuses to address the race issue honestly as per the Department of Justice statistics and the FBI statistics and the different regional police department statistics. Who commits crime, who is held accountable for that crime, who gets shot for those crimes, and who does not. And we all know that blacks are the minority of those shot by cops, despite the fact that they are the majority of those committing crimes and shooting cops. So, shove your bullshit right up your ass, lady. Unfortunately, race still determines too much. That's right. Race does determine too much in this country. Those uh, unconstitutional quotas 
that you have, that unconstitutional affirmative action policy that you have, well, 